Hello guys and welcome back to the How To Animate YouTube channel and in this brand new series I'm going to be doing a cutscene so you guys get to watch me animate a full fight scene uh, it's going to be very cool uh, we've got two ogre characters here they're going to be having a fight in a makeshift forest here this is all just temporary stuff I just roughed in um, yeah so we've got this dude here who is kind of like he's got a shield and an axe so he's kind of like the heavier character there too and then over here we've got hiding behind the tree here is this guy who's got two kind of like saber i guess weapons and you know he's a bit more stealthy a bit quicker he's um, slightly smaller than the other ogre and basically what's going to happen for this first part i already started roughing it in um, I'm going to be animating straight ahead, by the way, for this, so there'll be no blocking. Um, so this guy's going to sort of smell and turn towards the camera here, and then this guy over here is going to sort of peek behind the tree, and then when this guy turns this way, he's going to sort of rush in and do like a big attack, and then the fight's going to start. So, um, yeah, so in this series, it's going to be quite a long one. Um, I'm not going to show you everything that I do. Obviously, I'm going to cut away and do, and do some work off camera sometimes. Uh, and if, if anything's relevant, then I'll, I'll come back on on camera and uh, yeah, tell you guys about it. Okay, so let's get started. So first thing I want to mention is I'm animating to camera here. Okay, I've got a camera in the scene here uh, that's going to be animated, um, but I don't necessarily want to animate in this window. But it is very handy to always have your camera view uh, viewable. Obviously, ideally you'd have two screens. Um, so this will be on the other screen and probably your graph editor will be on the other screen. Because I'm capturing, uh, it all has to be on one screen. So it's a little bit tight. But, you know, it's always a good idea to have your camera. Because you are you are animating to the camera. Uh, which means, you know, I could spend a lot of time polishing these feet. But, you know... They're not in the camera, so what's the point? You know, you're just you're wasting time. Um, yeah, so I just want to go over the shoulders here. Um, at the moment, there's only sort of rotations on them, and it'll be really nice to have um, some translation as he walks forward here. Okay, so as he as he raises his body up, okay, you want to get some sort of nice weighty feeling. So as it, as he starts to come down, translate his shoulders up. Okay, and as he hits the floor, just after he hits the floor, then you bring them down. Okay, so you see that it just gives it a nice kind of feeling of weight. You know, that's what we're after with these guys. They're they're big creatures, and anything we can do to sell this weight would really help. So. And as he comes to the settle here, I'm going to do the same thing. So as he comes up, shoulders up in the air. Okay, and as he comes down, you want to delay it by like two or three frames. But then they come down afterwards. And then raise back up. And delay that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to play this back. Okay, you see how that already gives it a lot more weight okay and I'm just going to do the same thing for the body here um, I'm just going to delay these rotations on the chest I'm going to probably use this control here um, so as he comes forward just very subtly rotate back okay at this point still back as he hits hits the low point it's going to start to roll forward okay and the same here as he comes up just roll back a bit and as he comes to a settle here just very subtly bring down and then back up again and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the neck and the head as he's raising up, I'm just going to bring the neck back a little bit. Okay, and when he hits the bottom, bring it down. I 
probably want the neck to actually start jutting forward a bit because that looks quite nice. Because um, he's sort of at this point, he's sort of he smelt something. He knows something's out there. Okay, so I kind of want to keep his neck down at this point. So I'm just going to very subtly bring it up at this point and have it come down like this. Okay, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the head. So at this point, just very subtle. This is what really takes your animation to the next level. It's these very subtle movements and just being in control of every single part of your animation. Okay, I'm not I'm not leaving anything up to the computer really here. Obviously, the, the computer is in betweening for me, but. I'm in complete control of what's going on. And it's important to get to that stage, you know. If you notice as well, um, how big my rotation tool, tool is, the actual tool itself. Um, on your keyboard, if you press the, the plus and the minus, you can actually scale. Um, a lot of people, they animate like this. Um, for me, this, you, you can't, I don't know, that just feels really it just moves too much. I prefer a bigger circle so you can do finer movements like this. So now I'm going to create key poses for the next part. Uh, for this bit he's going to come to a stop here and leave a bit of a pause here and then he's going to turn this way sort of off screen right and look over here okay and this is all just setting up the fact that this guy's over here at this point this guy's gonna sort of peer around realize that it's got an opening to possibly get a stealth kill in without this guy even realize him I'm just gonna try and keep this shield sort of facing the camera because that looks nicer uh, maybe bring yeah I'm gonna bring the axe up because at this point he's Sort of suspicious someone's is about to attack. Yeah, so I'm just gonna raise this shoulder a bit. Probably raise this shoulder a little bit as well. Just it's starting to get a bit sort of tense and apprehensive. So it's just trying to build a nice pose. Uh, another thing to consider is the rule of thirds. Um, so that's basically if you don't know what the rule of thirds is, it's basically dividing your camera up and trying to fit all the interesting points within these four points here, here, here and here. Okay, so when posing and sort of building a cutscene you really want to keep in mind that. So I think probably at this point uh, we want the camera to rotate around just a little bit more. I'm just going to find the rotate wire. I'm just going to frame him a bit better. Sort of occupying this space because your, your eye is naturally drawn to here, here, here and here. Okay, so it's important to try and frame your shots right. Now we want a nice kind of subtle uh, s uh, slow out of this, okay? And there's there's a really easy way to do that. So you see here, we got all you do is set a key, okay? And that locks everything here. And then if you just move this along, then it gives you a slow in. It's a really quick way of doing slow ins and uh, sorry slow outs. Okay, and we probably want to do exactly the same at this point. You see the way it kind of just clunks around. So we can do the same here. So set a key and just drag it along just to give it more time. Okay, and we're going to set another key at the end here because we're actually going to overshoot the body. So this key here will be the overshoot. Okay, so basically what that means is He's rotating in this direction, he's not just going to come to a sudden stop. So you want to overshoot the body and then have it set all back afterwards. Okay, and every part of the body is also going to follow this same pattern. Okay, so very subtly. You see I'm barely moving anything at this point. It's just giving it a little nudge over. Okay, a lot of beginners they make the mistake of just overdoing everything, you know, everything's big and a lot of the time in animation it's just really subtle kind of
kind of nuances. Okay, it's the same principles of, of animation at work, but it's just toning everything back. Um, I definitely want to lead with the head. Okay, so I'm just going to grab everything on the head and just drag it back. So you want the head to move first and then followed by the body. And the last thing to hit this pose is going to be uh, the axe, the axe arm here. So as he comes around, I'm going to make sure that the arc of the chest is also coming down. Which I've got fine. Is that on there? Okay, so it's important to pay attention to your arcs. There's, there's natural arcs in every single movement. Um, so as he comes around, you want the body to dip slightly and then raise up. Okay. And it's also very important to do this on the head. Okay, so we've got the head slowly sort of coming around here. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit at this point as well. Pull it down a little bit. I've not rigged up the eyes yet. Um, I'm going to do that later. I just didn't get around to skinning them yet. And it's also going to add a blink, so that's going to help uh, with the facial here. There are some facial controls here, but I'm, I'm going to do that later. Um, so I think at this point is the point where he's actually going to be pulling focus. I'm actually get rid of that key, actually. And probably create a new one there. Okay. So. Cool, it's not looking too bad. I'm just going to make sure that everything is on spline. So I'm seeing a bit of clunkiness, and I'm not sure if it's because of flat keys or what. I think it was, yeah. Um, okay, so. It's not looking too bad. There's, I think the this arm here definitely needs to lag behind everything else. Okay, so as the body turns, it's going to delay everything on this arm here. And just offset it. So as it comes around, just bring it down slightly. Okay, so you see the way, way that uh, axe arm kind of just lags behind very slightly. Um, I'm also going to do the same for the shield arm. But obviously the way he's, he's holding up here, um, I don't think it would be delayed that much because sort of when you hold the shield in that position, um, it kind of follows your body quite well. You know, it's kind of very well attached to the rotation of your body. So it's going to make it very subtle. Just overshoot. That's probably too much overshoot for me. And just delay it a little bit. Okay, cool. And that brings us to the end of this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. In the next video, we'll be having a look at the other ogre in the background, having him sneak around the tree and come forward and do his attack and continue with the fight scene. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Uh, you can now support this channel on Patreon, and there's a link in the description. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.